welcome to chapter three, section five, equations of parallel and perpendicular lines. We should have already done a review of some algebra one concepts like slope, equations of lines. Um, and you are definitely gonna want your textbook for this video if you have gotten in the bad habit of not following along in your textbook physically. We are skipping page 156. We're gonna go straight to page 157. Uh, there is a wonderful example, example two, and we're gonna do the monitoring progress number three at the bottom of the page. Right now, you're gonna to wanna to pause and you're going to want to copy down the theorem uh, for 3.13 and 3.14 on the bottom, or sorry, the top of page 157 if you don't know how parallel lines and perpendicular lines uh, relate to each other. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to have to copy down some important information. All right, now just a refresher from the uh, Algebra 1 videos that you might have watched and some of the practice you've done. Remember that a slope is just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 rise over run. It's important. It doesn't matter what point you pick to go first or second, but that you line up the x underneath its y, the x underneath its y. Don't crisscross applesauce. And then finally, of course, slopes are y equals, or sorry, equations of lines in slope intercept form, which is the nicest way to read it, in my opinion, is y equals mx plus b, m being your slope, b being your y intercept. But we are going to save the equation part for the next video. Right now, I'm going to do number three. There is a picture you are going to want to follow along. I'm going to do my best to color code this, so I need to get my red pen in addition to my normal color. All right, it says to determine which of the lines are parallel and which of the lines are perpendicular. So let's start with what we know about line A. We know that there is a point at zero, two, and a point at negative two, negative two. So let's find the slope, the slope for line A. Doesn't matter which one you use for Y1 or Y2. I'm gonna kind of just go through in order because math makes sense. This will be my first point, this will be my second point. So Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we can say that the slope is negative four over negative two, which comes out to positive two. We'll save that for later. On to line B in red. We know that there is a point at two, three, and a point at zero, negative one. Our slope is going to be y2 minus y1 all over x2, Oh, excuse me, x2 minus x1, negative one. And you know what, since I made a mistake, let's take this moment, let's check. y2, that means that underneath it needs to be its x, x2. y1, take away three, take away two. These two line up. Whenever, if you get lost, go back to the fact that these coordinate pairs need to be paired up vertically in the slope equation. So we have negative four over negative two again, slope of two. In your head, you might be thinking things. I'm going to get to answering the question at the end. Line C in green. We have a point at four, two, and we have a point at three, negative one. So we can say that the slope is y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. Negative three over negative one, and that is positive three. And finally, line D, we have a point at negative three, zero, and then we need to look very closely. It shares a point with line B at zero, negative one. 
So its slope is y2 minus y1 all over x2. Ooh, take a look. I know this has confused some of you in class. x2 minus negative 3. Minus a negative is a positive. Negative 1 over 3. All right. Now what can we say? All right, well, this was kind of simple right here. These are the same slopes. That means that line A is parallel, right? Two big lines, two big vertical lines. You can't even see what I'm writing. Line A is parallel to line B. Done. All right, now, opposite reciprocal, opposite reciprocal, opposite reciprocal. Twos and threes and ne negative one thirds have nothing to do with each other. However, three, and it's opposite, so positive three's opposite is negative. Positive three's opposite is negative, it's reciprocal. Three over one's reciprocal is one over three. So negative one over three, we can say that C is perpendicular to D. All right, so your answer for number three is that A is parallel to B, C is perpendicular to D. Okay, now, you're gonna to need to pause the video with some good resolution. I apologize. I could probably figure out a way to do it a little bit better, but I want you to answer this question. I have to cover up the answer for you. <laughs> I want you to answer this question on your own. All right, so get the good resolution. Pause it, and there will be, a, if you're doing this on Edpuzzle, you'll answer this on Edpuzzle. Don't forget to watch to the end of the video to submit your answers. So this is what you're going to answer for Edpuzzle. 